OK, so previously we took a look at theatre1.java which asked us to compare strings for the day of the week and to print out the cost of a theatre ticket dependent on that day. Here we're going to expand on that problem and you'll see now our theatre tickets depend on the day of the week and the age of the person purchasing the ticket. So you've been asked to develop an application that allows a theatre employee to enter a day of the week and a person's age. The application should then display the cost of a theatre ticket according to that day and age. And the tickets are priced as follows. So Monday to Thursday, under 10s are free, 10 to 65 is 10 euro and over 65 is free. However, Friday to Sunday, under 10s cost 10 euro, 10 to 65 is 20 euro and over 65 is 10 euro. So now we have two conditions we need to take a look at and you can see our under 10, 10 to 65 and over 65 repeat themselves. So the way that we manage this problem is by putting one if statement inside of another and we're going to take a look at that problem now. So let's switch over to TextPad. OK, so you'll see here I've opened a TextPad file and I've named it theatre2.java which means theatre2 is going to be the name of my class. So we start the class with a comment as usual including the class name theatre2.java the author name and the date. We're going to just do this using an app class again. We're not going to get bogged down in instantiable classes right now because the focus of this is the if statement. So we will be working here in an app class, which means we're going to do our input and our output in here, and we're going to use JOptionPane. So we'll import Java X dot swing dot JOption pane. We have our class header, public class, theater two. And then we have our main method header, public static void main string args. And then if you're inclined to forget to close your brackets, close them straight away. OK, so we declare any data members, we're going to, any variables that we're going to need. And our variable that we're going to need in this case is just to accept the input from the user. So that's going to be our string for day. And then the other input we're taking from the user is their age. So we'll go with int age. We're going to go ahead then and get the input from the user. So day equals j option pane dot show message input dialog null please enter a day. OK, you'll see we don't need to parse this because Jaption Payne assumes that everything is a string and we want day to be a string. Then we come to read in the age. Now the age we want to be an integer, so we're going to have to parse this. Integer.parse int j option pane dot show input dialog Please enter your age. Closing two brackets at the end, one for the parsing and one for the J option pane. And then we're on to our process and output. OK, so we're going to combine the two here in our if statement. So in the previous example, we had our if statement for our days of the week. So I'm going to just go and grab that from theater1.java. If you're following along, you can do the same. OK, just align this all up properly. It's important to keep everything well aligned so that you can spot any problems that there are later. OK, now, so and I'll just revert this back to dot equals. We take out the ignore case for now. So we have our if statement for the days of the week. If day dot equals Monday or day dot equals Tuesday or day dot equals Wednesday or day dot equals Thursday, then print this message. Now, thing is, if the day equals Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday, we want to go ahead and we want to test another condition. So we'll take out our print statement for now and we're going to inside this if statement, open a new if statement. And this if statement is going to check the age. If the age is less than 10, okay, and you'll remember as well from looking at the table 
that under 10s are free Monday to Thursday, as are over 65s. So if age is less than 10, or age is greater than 65, then our J option pane dot show message dialog says the cost is no the admission is free okay and then after that we close our curly bracket following on from that then and still within my Monday to Thursday if statement I say else okay so if they're not under 10 and they're not over 65 then they're going to pay 10 euro so else j option pane dot show message dialog no the admission is 10 euro and close your curly bracket for that one so you'll see now this if statement is completely encased within my outer if statement which checks my day of the week moving on now and taking a look at my Friday Saturday Sunday again I'm going to take out this print statement and I'm going to replace it with an if statement my if statement is going to look very similar to the last one again if the age is less than 10 or the age is greater than 65 then the cost is 10 euro this time so j option pane dot show message dialog no the admission is 10 euro I'll just capitalize this T and then close your curly bracket and again then you're going to have your else if sorry we don't need an if because if they're not under 10 and they're not over 65 then they must be between 10 and 65 so we just need an else j option pane dot show message dialog no the admission is 20 euro and then close your curly bracket and then we can still keep the else that is not a valid day because if they haven't entered a correct Monday through Sunday then we're going to still give need to give them um, the invalid option so let's try compile this we compile successfully so we'll run it enter a day Monday enter an age 55 the admission is 10 euro so if I'm between 10 and 65 on a Monday it's going to cost me 10 euro so you get asked both questions the two get fed into the if statement we have one if statement completely enclosed within another contained within the other if statement okay and that's known as a nested if statement where one if statement is nested within the other and it's as simple as that just imagine they're completely separate treat each one like a new if statement and you can't go far wrong you'll see your curly brackets are getting a little co more complicated and that's why it's really important to be indenting the code accordingly and spreading it out as much as you feel is necessary so that you can clearly see what's going on that's nested if statements and the next thing we're going to take a look now at now in terms of selection statements is an, a switch statement and how we can use that for problems similar to this so let's take a look at that one next